So I just sat in the seat and like just practiced slapping where I'd just be like. Oh. What was that? <laughs> uh, great. Oh. Yep. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. And in front of us is our Lexus SC300 Drag Race project. If you're not familiar with this project, welcome to the channel. This has kind of been the big build that we've been working on the past well, months. It's, it's been a lot because it takes a lot if you want to build a race car the right way. And the history of this car is it was initially used in a B is for Build versus Tavares shootout several years ago where they bought cars and tried to make them go 10 seconds for $10,000 or less. And this was a miserable car. It, it, no fault of Chris's. It was already built. He did some minor modifications. It was just built wrong. So, over the past couple months, we have stripped this thing completely down, given it a new heart, and today our goal is to give it a rear end and a transmission. Now, of course, none of this would be possible without the support of eBay Motors. They were the sponsor of the original project between Tavarish and B is for Build, and they are the sponsor of this series for us and the PFI Speed guys. They love the idea of giving these cars a second chance. Let them do what they were meant to do, and that's what eBay Motors is amazing for, giving everything a second chance. With millions of unique parts listed, you're able to find exactly what you're going to need for your project car. Whether you're just trying to repair an old obscure classic or build a modern fast hot rod, they're gonna have the parts that you need. And with eBay buyer protections, they're there to help make sure you get what you bought. Again, huge thank you to eBay Motors for jumping on board and helping support this project. Also something I don't do often but want to go ahead and do is plug our merch. If you head over to our Bunker Branding page, you're able to find all of our official merchandise. Bunker Branding is the only place to buy it. There are some uh, copies out there. If you want to support us, you got to buy it through Bunker. But one product I really wanted to feature came from the Hell Camino build. Roadblock with the insane Hellcat drivetrain, our ute are the Hell Camino badges. We work with Bunker Branding really hard on getting these things absolutely perfect, and they are a cast metal. They're not cheap, plastic-coated anything. These are insanely high quality. I'm very proud of them, and we worked really hard on the price as well. It's $40 for a pair. You get them mirrored, so if you want to put them on your car, they will face front in the correct way. So, Again, I think we're really doing a good job at selling these at just $40. You click over, get a pair, so that way we can hopefully get some more and do more of these emblems, because I am insanely proud of how these came out. So, uh, but now, I plugged eBay, I've plugged our merch. Let's get you back to the past, because the reason this is a past, smart man here deleted his intro. So, uh, you'd swear I'd figure out this YouTube eventually, but eventually, right? Uh, well, to put a rear end together, we need parts, and that's what we've been waiting on, and I finally have a big collection of some custom parts and some off-the-shelf parts. So let's open them up, and I will show you the difference in some of the parts from the old stock rear end and what we've got upgraded. First, we have a strange box. Well, literally, it's strange. Uh, strange does a lot of really good drag racing axles, off-roading axles. They can custom an axle to just about any flavor that you want. So they, I called them up when it was time to get these made. Maybe this box is smarter than me. I'm also hoping everything that I'm supposed to get is in here. Yeah. Yeah. No. Does it open this way? Really smarter than me? Ugh, technical difficulties. Smart box. Dumb YouTuber. So in here are our custom made ax Whew, these are some uh <laughs> holy cow let's get get it out there we go uh, yes small parts box okay set that down upgraded 35 spline big racing axle and then now i'm comparing a short to a long but still as you can tell, this shaft is a whole lot bigger and meatier. You've got substantial thickness the whole length. Where this tapers down to go to a 31 spline, it stays the full size. We have 35 spline. And out here, it is set up to run 
the uh, captive bearing style. So we should not, if this breaks, lose a wheel. Basically, it would have to break in this section where it's two inches thick of solid billet. I think it's going to uh, do the thing and do the thing pretty stinking well. It's borderline overkill for Ford 88, but it's the axle we got, so why not throw everything we have at it to keep it from breaking, right? You know. In our other strange box, Well, I'm missing some parts, unfortunately, so we'll be making a phone call. But this is what's called a spool. This is gonna replace the differential that we used to have in the car, and it takes the ring gear wheel mount here, it takes all the power, and it just sends it equally to each wheel. What this does mean is low speed turning, the tires are gonna bind up on the inside, it's gonna kinda chirp and be obnoxious, but it's meant for drag racing, so I'm okay with that. All right, next couple boxes are a little easier. This is a master installation kit for a Ford 88. It has our pinion bearings, it has our crush sleeve, new seals, and everything to set up the new ring and pinion correctly. And this is just a real nice reusable lube locker gasket that, uh, you know, you don't have to put a bunch of silicone on to make it seal. Now, this is our ring and pinion. When I first, in the last episode, talking about my rear, mentioned I intended to run a 303 gear ratio, or 308 gear ratio. And what that means is you can have a lot of high speed, but there's not as much torque multiplication. And some of you questioned why, and I kind of took that seriously. We went back and kind of redid all the math and realized that that was a little bit too, too far. So I uh, backed it back up redid the math, rechecked it again, and we're going to run a 331 ring and pinion gear. Um, that's gonna set us up for a little more acceleration, a little less top speed, but it should pair a lot better with the setup that we've got, with the RPM we wanna turn. So thank you guys, I do read comments, take some of what you do, uh, do say seriously, and it had me questioning what I wanted to do, and uh, my math, and I was wrong, redid it. And uh, you saved me from putting the whole car together and just having a top speed monster. So 331 is what we're going with. And then one of the final pieces of the puzzle, I tracked this down on eBay. They are not necessarily the exact, exact, exacting thing I wanted, but it fit the budget and is going to do the job really well. And that is some new rear shocks. I can which way now? Don't drop them. There we go. We've got a fresh pair of. Uh, I've, I'm trying to even remember the brand. <laughs> they these are uh, strange uh, rear shocks as well. I got them used. They're double adjustable, which means we can adjust rebound and compression, which is really important when you're going to try to dial in. The travel of everything um this has almost it's just over six inches of stroke in the shock absorber seven to eight would have been super ideal but we're trying to do some things on some level of budget and uh let me grab the old shock so uh yeah i think i think we have a little more travel i think i have this shock's length in travel, plus I have an appropriate spring, this little motorcycle go-kart spring. This is a cool shock, it's just not right. So those are the parts we've got. I'm excited to uh, get building this thing. We gotta make it mobile again because we've got other cars that need to jump on the lift. So as soon as paint dries, we're gonna start building a rear end and I'll kind of explain to you that gear setup process and what you need to do to uh, make it right so you don't blow up your brand new parts.
right, let's get you guys caught up on some of that time-lapse footage you saw of me messing with the rear end. Uh, notice the wardrobe change while I was cleaning up the differential housing. I hit it with some compressed air and it blew the cavity of disgusting old gear oil all over me, all over that shirt. That shirt just went in the trash because there's no hope for it. And yeah, it kind of sucked because I hate that smell, but that's what happens. But over here, We've got our, you know, quick spiffy can of paint, making it look a little bit better in the housing. And we have our bearing races knocked out of it. This is the new race ready to go in. And the reason we don't have the new races in is uh, my race installing tool. Someone wanted it more than me. So uh, we'll be picking a new one of those up in the morning, which is kind of a bummer, but I can show you our new ring and pinion and differential kind of partway together now. So here is our spool with our new gear on it for the 3.73 rear end ratio. This has 43 teeth on it, I believe. I counted it, I'm not gonna count it again. It's like 43. And then here is what kind of looks like a little bit of a mushroom, a 13 tooth pinion compared to our 10 tooth pinion. All power is transmitted out to each axle equally compared to our old differential limited slip with clutches that we talked about briefly before. So we've got this together with a pre-measured shim to check for our thickness. I don't have the really fancy tool that you bolt in there. I, I'm a practical guy, let's put it in. So found the old shim that was hiding underneath the old bearing, measured that, to kind of set and get close. So we'll just kind of keep working along. I'm a little bit at a uh, the end of the road because we didn't get those bearing retainers from Strange. They are getting them sent out right away to us. They apologize that they weren't in the box. They're on their way. We'll get those and uh, get the tool in the morning and get back to putting this rear end together. So even if I don't have the axle parts, as soon as I get those uh, bearing race installers, and we have our differential set up and together, we can get this housing in the car, which is kind of exciting. And good morning, it is the next day and we've got some work done. We picked up that tool, uh, the bearing race installer from Harbor Freight. We got those races installed and if you saw during the time lapse when I was installing this back one, it's kind of tricky when you're trying to work around a camera so you can go <laughs> see what we're doing. So I have the pinion installed and I have it basically preset and pre-torqued. I don't have a seal in it and we have a couple crush sleeves which is good because doing a rear end right, you have to put it together and take it apart several times. So one thing you do is you need to measure the rotational force required in inch pounds. And that's where I love this really cool old dial torque gauge. It works amazing. I have put together many rear ends with it. And uh, you just kind of slowly torque it down to spec and then you basically go beyond. So we've got that together. Our next step is we're going to kind of pre-measure and put in our shim packs and load our ring gear and our differential spool. You know, there's no differentiating there. We're gonna get that set in and then we're gonna measure what's called backlash. It's how much this can basically wiggle back and forth against our ring gear. And once we get that set correct left to right and we know that's a good measurement, we then will actually paint the teeth and measure our engagement to make sure our pinion's in the right place, like everything is where it belongs. So that's one where time-lapse is good because it's tons of fiddly stuff and uh, Dwayne can just skip a lot of it if he needs to when it's just the boring fiddly stuff. So, but trust me guys, if you don't set your rear end up right, you're not gonna have any success. So uh, more measuring, more fiddling, and we're gonna get this thing ready to go back in 
Lazarus there. Now, in case you're wondering, you can kind of tell by that time lapse, I was not joking. You put it together and take it apart a ton of times. Now, you can get by not being that precise if you just don't care about doing things right. But to do it right and get your measurements as precise as possible, you got to put it together a whole lot. Measure, tweak, change shims. The math should do certain things. And then when you actually put it together, the math doesn't do those things. But we've got it together now. And this is marking paint, so you can measure gear lash, and it's not showing up on camera super, super duper well. You can kind of see it there. Hopefully, Dwayne can kind of put up a picture of what you're aiming for in the paint. But we have nearly full tooth engagement, both drive and coast side. I'm really excited, and that also puts us in a position that we can put this back in the car. So we can get it mounted up. We're still waiting on those new bearing retainers so we can get our axles in, but we can get this in the car and start figuring out where our shocks are gonna land. So huge progress, gonna keep chugging along and I'm uh, appreciating you guys hanging out while we're doing it. Good morning, guys. We've been uh, in the shop already getting some work done. Uh, I've just been swinging a hammer. We'll explain that in a second. That's a little bit of work, but we have rear axles pressed together. If you saw, we went ahead and pressed those bearings together because the retaining plates that we're getting for them slide over the top, which let me 
get them fully together and then very nerve wrackingly slide them in with loose fitting backing plates to make sure my uh, axle measurements were correct. And they are, so that is really good news. Those axles are right. I wasn't dumb in all of my measuring. So as soon as we get those silly retainers, we're gonna have a fully assembled axle and ready to get into shocks. But something else I wanted to get started on is see if we can't also get the transmission bolted in back here. Now, this car once before did have a GM transmission. It had a TH350. They're kind of weak, especially if we're gonna throw this much power at it. So we're upgrading it to its bigger brother, the TH400, but it's also a whole lot bigger. So even though the 350 kind of fit in here without much issue, we're having to, you know, delicately massage the uh, bodywork there, which it does hurt a little bit knowing that this was a fairly nice five-speed car, but you know, all of that has already condemned it to not really going back to stock. So a lot of uh, hits with the big, big hammer, some precise crushing and folding with an air hammer, which then lets us come back with the big hammer and I think we're ready for a dry run where we'll slide it up and if everything works and I can get to all the bolts and it clears the rest of the tunnel, we pull it back out, put the converter in it with fluid and uh, send it home for real, which will be really exciting because that'll put us down to a drive shaft and lots of wiring and plumbing and we'll uh, finally catch up. It, it was real nerve wracking last night when uh, I got a notification about a video uploaded from PFI Speed and uh, Freedom Civic's running. Whoops. But anyway, uh, next step is we now have to work on plumbing, which is sitting down, drawing out your entire system, your fuel pumps, your fuel rails, regulators, uh, in this pay case, the uh, water pump as well, because that'll be electric, power steering, you draw everything out, and then you start writing down the fittings you need so you can get those ordered. I'll sit down when I'm done with all of my scribbling, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, it's just gonna be a lot of scribbling. Spoiler alert. All right, it is another day and we are back to work. And I told you I was going to show you kind of my project plumbing and writing sheet and how I can figure out what I need to order for fittings. Now, first off, here's just kind of the parts list of what I knew was missing, what I needed to get plumbed. So as I was ordering or getting things coordinated, I checked it off. Now this is where it's gonna get confusing. But what I've got is basically, this is just, the engine side of our fuel system. So from the tank, we're running a dash 10, which splits into a twin dash eight feed because we're running the dual rails, big and small injectors, but we're only ever running one set at a time. So this is more than sufficient fuel. It just makes it kind of complicated in plumbing. So we come up into split and then each rail is going to return to one side of the regulator and then it returns back to the tank so then what I did is after kind of drawing this out and envisioning how it was gonna go, I just come down here in 8 a.m. in 90 degree fittings, straight fittings, 180 degree fittings, and just start doing marks so you know what to order. And then we come here to kind of the fuel tank. I'm running a really complicated tank setup. I have this big tank, which is a 20 gallon primary tank for just long driving for drag and drive. There's also a two and a half gallon tank that is our primary feed that goes to the front of the car. What that does, if you remember Kevin, uh, KSR set up independence for Derek and Vice Grip Garage with that, where you can turn off this fuel pump and it quits feeding fuel from this tank. So in my small auxiliary tank, I can then run it dry and get it ready to hold the higher octane, more expensive fuel for the drag racing passes. So this is kind of the cruising tank. Then I'll have a race fuel tank or just the primary feed that also works as a surge tank. The reason you want a surge tank is as you can tell with something this big, when you're accelerating, even with foam, you can get fuel sloshing around and get fuel starvation where there's no longer fuel for the fuel pump to pick up and send to the engine which could then create lean spikes and poor running conditions and damage your very expensive racing engine. So not a good scenario. By running that taller, skinnier tank, we're generally going to always have fuel available for that pump to pick up and send to the front. But again, in that whole plumbing scenario, it gets really weird. So all of our feed and returns are gonna come off the second tank that we don't have here right now, 
That, when it reaches full capacity, will have an overflow return that then comes into this tank. And then this pump will also then have a feed that goes into the other tank's top feed. It's, it's a lot of plumbing that once we get all the fittings in, we can show you. Um, describing it, even if I drew pictures, it would just kind of look like, you know, that gibberish. The other thing we were trying to get done is our shock fabrication for the episode. Unfortunately, our bearing retainers um, weren't sent in the strange kit. They were supposed to get sent out Monday. They still haven't sent them out and are kind of not giving me an answer. So thumbs up there, guys. Uh, probably include the parts that are part of kits or actually like over an item when you don't send them. So I can't properly get my axles held in place so I can't mount the wheels so we can't work on ride height and get shocks which is kind of a bummer but we'll deal with that but we still can fit this thing in this is our th400 transmission that came in medium duty and some light duty Chevy trucks some cars this is kind of a go-to for the drag racers you can have trans brakes you can have billet cases you can have a lot of really cool stuff with it and we got it paired with our billet fti converter I told them what we were doing and they spec that thing out for us so with the holes that we've kind of uh, or the hammering we've already done look at that light you can't see anything with the hammering we've already done on each side hopefully it will fit and i'm being optimistic by going ahead and putting the converter in so that way, if it fits, we just bolt it in and it stays. Because I still need a stand-up transmission jack. So we're either going to lay on our back and jack, or I'll put a jack on this table. I'm going to figure something out. I'm not gonna lie I was really worried about how that was gonna go because I pulled tape measure and I guessed educatedly a little education so I just went off of what I knew I needed to do on the firewall and hoped it was going to apply to an LS and guess what it did that could not be any more perfect it's serviceable it is like the perfect clearance all around for that bad boy to go up in there. I am thrilled. So some washers, some shift linkage together and uh, build a transmission mount and that is good. So we're hitting some wins, but if you noticed, we had someone visiting and helping with the transmission. This is David, he helped with the Transcon van. Um, I've, I've bought a lot of parts from you. Yeah, so I also have an LS powered SC300 um, that unfortunately very recently met a swift and violent end at the hands of a young lady in a Jeep Compass. Um, well, so really what happened was David knew I was running out of budget. So I hired her. To crash his car <laughs> so he can bring me race car parts. So we have got a, this is, again, we're building a 10 second car and this is what a 10 second car needs, right? No. Yes, comma, no. Um, at, so, 100, at 150 miles an hour trap speed, which is not a 10 second pass, it's usually like 135 or so. Um, but at 150 miles an hour, NHRA requires that you run a parachute. Uh, obviously, Jared intends to go at least 10 that, seconds. Yeah, yeah we're at running least, at least 135. So we're trying to be you know. safe. That's why the yeah. car has the 8.5 second cage in it. Yep. That's why we're putting a parachute on it. So. After all of our rear end, like their success, we have a rear end in it. There's just lots of little annoying things. We don't have the ability to put load on it, so we can't measure out our shocks and finish that. We needed something good to happen to the rear end. And what's better than sticking a pipe out of it with a parachute? Yep. So we're going to uh, 
end the episode by lowering it down. We're going to pull that bumper and uh, make it look way more race car. Oh, yeah. So what do you think? Honda or Lexus? My money's on the Lexus. I, I think that's good money. Oh, yeah. Brent Freedom Civic is not winning. It's not going two for two. It is not ready. <laughs> no, no one's ready for this. <laughs> this this doesn't, doesn't need to exist, but oh, man, I am so grateful it does. We are making progress. We have the bracket in the car, the bumper remounted. There's David's posterity. Um, we are now starting to test fit and get the cable run and ready. So this is just in, it's not bolted in just yet. But whenever you're running your parachute cables, you need to not fold them. They can't have any tight bends. Everything needs to just flow nice and smooth. So pretty much this particular run you can pick any hole you want how you get it to the parachute it just needs to be smooth then david's got that run nice and neat and then what i did is i basically sat in the seat and right now it is just hose clamp mount mounted that works pretty well i will probably go ahead and once i 100 percent decide i really like that position i will go ahead and weld that bracket on just so that way it won't hit but Again, when it comes to mounting your actual activation bracket, it can be down low, it could be anywhere. The main thing is you can get to it really easy. So I just sat in the seat and like just practice slapping where I'd just be like, oh. what was that? <laughs> uh, great. Oh. Yep. Did, why is the safety out? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I was practice slapping up here just to make sure it was like a natural, comfortable movement to where I was able to, to hit it well. And now we can go over the lesson of how to properly... We might actually have to. We might have gotten lucky on that one. It's a little gross. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, go, we'll, we'll go through packing this. We'll go through and pack. And that way I can get you your license plate back too. Yeah. So clean, uh, clean up your pilot chute a little bit. Yeah, so when he yeah. throws the thing, this catches yeah. the air, it bounces out, catches the air, yeah. and then drags the parachute out. And, and that keeps going. I, I'm out of space. Yeah, out of room. So, one key thing too is if you ever build yourself a drag car, <laughs> never touch the brake until you feel the parachute tug. If you're on the brake before the parachute has actually slowed the car down, you're gonna have the car nosing down from the foot brake, the hydraulic brakes, and then suddenly it's gonna yank violently back and it's gonna upset the car. And a lot of the crashes that you see happening where these real fancy dragsters or the GTRs, uh, when they first started getting shoots, a lot of those crashes were caused by people hitting the brake without the parachute fully deployed. So if you're running the parachute, make sure you kinda, you'll feel it kinda tug and the car get heavy from the rear, then you can start applying your foot brake. But you get them out of order and it's gonna cause a problem. So I guess we will uh, open the door 
and stretch this all out and go through packing a parachute because it, it's a little fresh. It needed to get some air anyway. Well, it's packed back up, so uh, make sure you have your safeties in before you demonstrate how, how a parachute works. So parachute is now in. We have a transmission in that fits, which is really good. And that means we're gonna be able to measure for a drive shaft really soon and gets us really, really close. So hopefully next time we're gonna have shocks in and maybe we'll do some painting, mounting a seat. Who knows? There's a tremendous amount to do on this one. There's still a lot to do on that one, but We'll, we'll get there. We don't always comes down to the wire just because these are insane projects. We are not doing cookie cutter builds that are easy to do. We're building absolutely insane creations that take a lot of work to do right. You know, we're not just throwing stuff together here. So thank you to David for swinging up, crashing his car and bringing us some more race car parts. And uh, we're just gonna keep on going along. So appreciate you guys hanging out as we are uh, working through these projects. I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices and uh, make sure you know how to pack your parachute. <laughs>